Hello, Grangers are on view, this time for our sale, 17th of April. Easter will have been and gone and you've eaten all your eggs and everything and uh, are ready to come down to Gorringe's warehouse and have a look and see what we've got cluttering the place up. So I was thinking about this, all this furniture we're selling, and I worked out that we are selling 46 sales, just weekly sales a year, plus some fine sales, at least 200 lots a week, maybe more. So we're selling the 10,000 lots of furniture Great. a year. Wow. If my maths are right. And that's, uh, that's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. And we look around the room sometimes and think, why are we selling some of what we're selling? Why, why are we selling some of what we're selling? Um, and we do think, why did the value take that in? Why is that here? Why did that person bring that in? And of course, it's because we can't resist trying to keep these things going rather than just throwing them away and dumping them. So we do end up with bits and pieces here that end up being 20, 30 quid and you think, oh, good grief, it's blocking the warehouse up. But you know, it's all, it's green. It's green if someone buys it and uses it. So I suppose there's a plus somewhere in there. Anyway, this week coming, we have some more interesting things to show you in amongst all the other bits and pieces, such as like 141 showing here. Look at this, this is interesting. It's, it's got a sort of, it feels a bit like Austrian Art Deco um, and what the vendor and we uh, agree entirely with is, is it's South African, mm. but it's definitely been influenced by sort of 1930s um, European design. So it's in hardwood, but with these darker panels carved with African animals and birds and things. So and a very stylish leg. Yes, yeah. it does, doesn't it? Yeah, so there we go. There's a start. There's something unusual for very. you to start with. Yes. Then I'm going to drift across this way. Nice fire around there, should anyone need one? That is magnificent. With niches, look, wow, lovely niches. Yes. That's lot one, it says here, it's handy. Uh, Lots of garden bits, and the garden's all picked up again, so I was selling on Monday. And we, oh, you kicked the bucket. Got, I kicked the watering can, <laughs> it's a close thing. Um, and yes, garden furniture's back up again. We're all outside, Easter's coming. We're gonna be poking about in the garden uh, if it doesn't rain. And so yes, all these things like the galvanized buckets and the teak tables and all that, all, all back on, back in demand and, and what's just as well really, because we've got plenty of them in the cells for you lined up. So I drift backwards past this, slightly better than usual um, wardrobe, I guess, essentially in oak, but with a little bit of carving to it and some quite nice, um, I like iron. the detail. Yeah, nice, nice. detail. It yeah. lifts it, doesn't it? It does. It's got Further some nice... on, yeah. from a job up near sort of Carter's Cornerway, this is lot six. It's sort of Edwardian arts and crafts. Um, could be Liberty. It's very much got that flavour. If it's not Liberty, it's very much influenced by it. What makes it look a bit different from a normal standard one? Well, we've got this spiral twist, which is not uncommon, but the, the way it's used is slightly different. A little bit of pierce work here, just one wing cupboard to the rack, asymmetrical, a bit more stylish and interesting. These lovely planished great, copper hinges and escutcheons, again with this sort of Art Nouveau mm. look to them. Uh, and then down below, rather lovely loop handles, a pot board, a single cupboard to the other side, bouncing off of the one above. Just a really nice bit of furniture, that lot six, and solid as a, as a as a solid piece of oak furniture can be. <laughs> Carrying on down, some older oak cupboards of varying types, such as that press cupboard there, um, skirting around refractory tables. Now here's the next one I've got to show you from the same property, lot 38, Great dark stuff. probably to see. But again, this is a little earlier and it's, it's certainly Victorian. It has aesthetic influences to it. Um, and so what are we looking at here? Well, it's made of mahogany, nice rich color, lovely details like these ring turning, uh, then some good carving, a little bit of nice little foliate carving there, piercing, look, through there. Yes. Yeah. The way these stick out, stick through, uh, sort of suggesting earlier construction. Right. A, a verse or motto, comedy cum Laetitia sibum et bibe vinum. Something about have a good laugh and drink lots of wine, which always seems a good Sounds motto good. to me. Yes. Uh, and again, we've got lovely little handles, brass loop handles oh, nice. on the drawers. So really yeah, nice. a nice thing that mm. uh, one to keep an eye on. Next to it, from the same property, nice geometric oak chest, lot 37. I'm looking at a fairly ancient clock here. By- Nice size. It's not huge, is Sandhammon it? Sandhammon of 
Battelle, B-A-T-T-E-L-L. -L. Uh, case has clearly been messed about with over the years, but lot 16 looks like an early-ish uh, buyer battle maker. Uh, we've got some cricket tables, we've got some French tables, we have this um, rather nice oak um, choir stool or what have you, which says bequeathed to the Wheel Church in 1917 um, by the Reverend Canon Benlands. Mm. And what's nice, it's got a misery cord, so we lift up the seat and there below you've got this nice carving underneath. Gosh. That's a nice little detail, that's lot 32. That's quite chunky, but, but great fun. Mm. Uh, ignore the sort of bits and pieces here. They're just visiting, I think. Um, <laughs> across the back, David went down in Seaford. Didn't find much in this flat, but he did find some nice audio equipment. This is name audio, um, and so we've got sort of amps and preamps and things there, along with other related speakers and the like. That is as yet to receive a lot number that I can see, but it will be getting we'll find one, it. I'm sure. Yes. Um, then, other, what am I finding here? Punch. Big run of punch. Is it in the cell? Seems to be. Look, 115. So, look, boxes and boxes of this. Uh, the, you know, as we see, punch, very popular in its day. This is the 1881 um, volume. And there are... Gosh. Well, I, I wouldn't like to have to count them. 1867, like 1907. I'd say there's wow. more than 100 volumes yes. here, quite possibly. <laughs> so, uh, looks quite nice in a bookcase. You've got a bookcase to fill and want to decorate it with punch. There's a, there's a thing. Um, what are they? They're tall. Well, what did we see on mine? We, we, we found out people, you know, the trade are ever resourceful. And small pedestal desks, small pedestal desks are struggling to uh, sell at the moment. So what are people doing? They are lifting the top off, ah, throwing it away, right. putting a new top on each of the pedestals yes. and selling them as bedside chests. Mm. And the desks are making 100 quid and the pair of chests are making four or 500 if they're done nicely. Now, these are not quite the same because that would have been a very tall desk. Yes. It could have been a clerk's desk, I suppose. But they've definitely come from something and then seen some slight adaptation. But I like the, the wood. Yeah, people, they're very dark mahogany, aren't they? Mm. Um, but yeah, people like this sort of thing. 117. And in fact, they're very similar to this one next to it, 118, which is definitely a later piece of furniture, but has age. It feels like it's 19th century. Um, let's have a look at the lock. English lock by the looks of things, but an unusual shaped chest, but 118. I suppose it's Edwardian or thereabouts. Mm. But that dressing table colour. mirror, I like the detail. Yes, that's that that, nice? again. Is that, um, is that a bit deco-y? I think you're absolutely right there. It's certainly not the English taste and the way it's done. I think it's a little bit sort of Biedermeyer-y, right. almost um, Egyptian-esque influence in the way these styles taper down. I think that's great, sir. The brass stringing has that secessionist look to it, but, it's, but this is a bit older. So look, 119, nice. a curiosity. Nice big altar sticks there. Yeah, Get the brass so out, give them a polish. <laughs> and how about this? You can keep your fire under control by keeping it behind a cage. Oh, wow. Look, uh, one, two, two. Lovely. From the same carter's corner Gosh. property. Look, lovely thistles there. And then, again, these foliage Imagine motifs. with a fire behind. It yeah, would look, um, would look very pretty, hot wouldn't it? Hot doors you'd get. Hot doors. Um, but, yeah, we keep the, keep the kids doors. away from it. And um, what else could one do with it? I'm sure people come up with great ideas. Of yes. So, anyway, there we go. That's just a selection of what is in the warehouse. Some nice but stuff. as you have seen, it is some nice stuff. Mm. Mrs L says it's some nice stuff. So Mrs L, yes. Some nice well, stuff. there's quite a few bits I'd like. Well, there we go. If you like them, then uh, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look at that. I keep, you know, you, you keep wondering where I keep finding things. I think it was suspended by chains that way. Wow. Given the orientation of the light fittings. Yeah. But it's possible, actually. And instead, it was that way. No. Which actually, yes, it was. It was that way. Really? Yeah, because oh, I yes, think it okay. hung from these. Yes. And it weighs enough. Lovely brass, possibly ecclesiastical, but a good looking uh, light fitting, mm. albeit it needs some work. Look, 131. Yeah. So, anyway, I'll stop waffling on about the warehouse. Nice sofas here. These More chairs are fittings. nice as well. Pardon? These chairs, I'll be nice. Chairs, it looks yeah. like these chairs come with this table. Yes. Lot 95, yeah. you're getting six chairs and a table in nice solid it's just, condition. It's nice to have some nice bits, isn't it? It is nice to have some nice bits. So come along to the warehouse, see what we've got, and we're going to look at the smalls. Okay, so here we are looking at the smalls. Really good lot again. It's a bit like the furniture. It reflects uh, a really nice diverse level of entries. All sorts of goodies here in amongst it. Let's pick out a few treats. I like this. 
Block 488. This is Kian Lung, this is Chinese. I should think that's about 1740, 1750. I think from memory, the spearhead border gives it some sort of dating clue, but rather nice of Chirin that. Again, Chinese market remains strong. Um, so uh, as with a lot of these Chinese bits and pieces, we'll no doubt see some fairly uh, hefty bidding on it. Um, there's some English 18th century porcelain here, such as 484, the little sauce boat there, which again, this will be, it was from the, the, the Southburn collection, it says here, Lowestoft. Got a crack running through it. Uh, people used to get very excited about Lowestoft. Um, I suspect they still find some enjoyment within it. Now, we had a blue and white sauce boat last week that yes, made £2,600. Really well. And it drove Dan nuts because he, he thought <laughs> it was Liverpool, uh, which is what a lot of people sort of used to attribute things to when they didn't know what else it was. I'm not putting Dan down on that. That was very much a standard thing to do. Um, anyway, after it made the money, he did even more research, and eventually he had to. He found the Northern Ceramics Society. Oh um, someone had identified it as Lund's Bristol factory from 1740, wow. which made it extra rare, and hence it made its money. As always, these things seem to make their money. Mm. Um, but uh, yes, he was pleased to have found it, and it was only attributed five years ago, and discovered then. So we, we very much let him off on that one. Yes. Um, anyway, carrying on down, waffling on about this, that and the other, we'll pick up some art in a bit. There's some bronzes scattered throughout. Um, there's some whiskey scattered throughout. Such a nice selection. It's a good selection, isn't yeah. it? It's well mixed in as well, that isn't it? That vase is rather fun. 468. Yeah. Yes. Um, David Frith, Studio Pottery. Nice. I only know that because it's someone's very <laughs> helpfully put a leg. But his, his mark will be here. But you've got to be able to decipher it. Ah. Um, anyway, that's 468. Yeah. Um, so a bit of David Frith. Um, carrying on round and back down. Let's go back down this side. I'll spin around again. We'll pick up on some art as and when. Oh, these, well, this guy. Oh, <laughs> 681. This is a um, chap called Summers. And uh, he painted naked ladies, basically, with the boobies. Um, and they're, they're actually, there's lots of them online and they're surprisingly, well not surprising necessarily, but they're very popular it seems in, in the sort of few hundred pounds range. So you cheeky. get four in the lot. Literally there, cheeky, yes. Literally cheeky. Yes, Literally he doesn't get cheeky. too rude, he just no. gets saucy. Yeah, that's good. On the same level, but, but totally different subject, 684, Elizabeth McGilvery so Knowles. Pretty. Elizabeth McGilvery Knowles specialised in these miniature paintings. Um, sort of almost the framed detail. up as if they could go into a doll's house, yeah. aren't they? And, uh, you know, there's my hand to give you an idea of scale. Mm. They're tiny pictures. Mm. Again, well-recorded artists. Lots of them appear. Um, she was well-regarded at the time. Nice famous label. They're from Toronto, curiously. Look at that. There we go. So there we are. Lot 684. Something a bit different. Then, I like that. Yes. Nice column there. Nice yes. Corinthian column. Turn it into a lamp or something. 392. Mm. Walking sticks, nice magic lantern there, looks a bit better than average because it's got a sort of a thing going on here, a sort of mechanism that looks unusual. Um, we could investigate further, what does it say? It's an Edison home kinetoscope, no less. How useful. So it's not quite a magic lantern, it's sort of moved on from there, it's very useful, it's lot 393. <laughs> uh, here you are, and you get, the, um, you get the lantern slides for it, which are somewhat smaller. There we are, and look, there's there's several. It's 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 a jump in technology where they've gone from one single image to multiples, and then mm. presumably it moved around and did something. And it's a bit like today's uh, high definition TV. It's just the uh, incarnation. What's three nine five? Is that for three nine five? Yes, that's a cheese dome. Yeah, that's a biggie. Isn't nice it? big heavy one. Yes, molded Victorian with sort of faux bamboo pattern. Um, let's have a look underneath. Still see if it too. tells us who made it. No, it doesn't. So sort of anonymous Staffordshire factory or the like. But yeah, Stilton or whichever, Smart thing. whichever cheese you want to put under your dome. <laughs> um, it's available. Yeah, yes. That's it. Good. Uh, well, the chatty old clocks. More magic lantern slides. Tiffany style lamp. Very much in the style not of the period. Um, then what else have we got? Oh, this, there's a number of these. And there's a collection of assorted typewriters scattered through the cell. This is lot number 356, a Lambert typewriter. And these sort of early typewriters, you do wonder about how they ever got much typing done because I think you have to turn the dial to select the, the letter, letter yeah. or the other side. And then you press it, punch, and you, you type that. And then you turn it for the next one. I mean, 
I guess you get quickish, like sort of teenagers yes. texting, but still. <laughs> it, it, and, and of course, you make a mistake, it must be fun. But uh, anyway, that's one of I them. I love these jugs with the... The Devonware. Yes, yes, we had quite a few. In Motto it. wear. Yes, yeah. great fun. And that'll be a puzzle jug where you've got to put your fingers over the right yeah. holes to be able to drink out of it. But yeah, that's uh, in with a few other bits. You've got some Belik, the Irish factory there. Um, there's a Dresden miniature cup and saucer and a bust of um, bark as well in sort of Parian type. Robinson and Ledbetter, R&L. Mm. Um, so yeah, they're a curious little lot of ceramics. Yeah. Um, another typewriter, 352. This one is the Lilliput model duplex machine. And again, a similar thing of they're turning the dial to select it and pushing down and what have you. Um, it's got a bell as well when you reach the end. Bing! Bell fun. <laughs> yes. so. Great fun. Uh, I like that. That's a bottle coaster. Uh, sitting on the dinner table. We've got 347. It's plate? it's old Sheffield plate. Mm. Yeah, which is rather nice. And you know, a nice big generous width to the diameter of them. It's suggesting and the then sort that's of for older, the corks, is it? I guess so, or yeah. the stoppers or the corks. You may yes. have had cut glass. Probably had may have had some sort of additional accessories, but yeah, rather nice that. Sitting next to a pleasing pair of Sort of late Regency bronze candelabrum, candelabra, uh, which were, um, they're signed, mm. Cartier, and they are, you've got, this, these would have been brighter, I think, there would have been more gilding to, the, to those, and also the figures remain darker probably, but they're quite stylish, these sort of yes. acrobats. They're a bit of a two, they sort of, they're not quite... They are, they are a pair, but they're sort of in so far as the urns are facing different ways and what have you, but the figures are in the same position. But still, nice things. Mm. Next to it, another He's nice fun, thing. He's he? fun. Look, 345. This is a Wedgwood Zodiac bull. Yes. He's got the signs of the Zodiac upon it, designed by uh, Arnold Mackin, it says very helpfully underneath. I think Keith Murray might have had a hand in it as well. Uh, so that's that one. 335. I'm still going on about these typewriters. Yes, you are. This is uh, an American one, the Odell typewriter. Retail by Perry and Co. Again, and, another, sewing uh, and an interesting sewing machine by Murdoch. Look at the detail on that. Beautiful, isn't it? It's very pretty. So you see this and you think of sort of Victorian papi mache, mm. mother of pearl inlay, and what yes. have you. Yeah, quite a thing. Lovely. So, uh, yeah, we, we're not just doing typewriters, we're doing sewing You, you said you'd well. mention art. Well, I've done two so far, and I'm going to do more when I think about it. Feel the inspiration. Yes. Oh, actually, yes. So, uh, over here, what have I got to show you? These are by Tessa Spencer Price. There's memory for you. Uh, lot they 743. Like they're from Sunny Climbs. And over there, yes. one without a number, this would be around about 720 something. Yes. Um, and yeah, they're just quite nice and jolly, aren't they? They are. Uh, yes, we two do separate with a bit lots. Of brightness. Exactly. Cheerful things. Yes. So there's two more pictures Thank for you. Yeah. Uh, you can have a French army officer if you could be Belgian, I suppose. Number 73, your number's up. Lot 722. What's we have a Chagall, my we have a Chagall print where we've helpfully put the lot ticket over the numbering, uh, which I'll move it off there just so we can see it's numbered limited edition, not signed. We did have a signed one last week. Uh, I thought this was quite fun. Couldn't find much about E.G. Turner, but I just thought that had a sort of nice painterly touch to it. You mentioned something. I know. No? I thought you picked up on something. What? Isn't yes, we're not going through there. We're not yet, going through are we? there. No, don't go Hello, through Annie. there. <laughs> no, no, ah, no, okay, these are good. A run of lots decorated and made by Jesse Marion King. There's lot 269. Um, hand painted flowers in that case. You get three cup you get three trios there. Um, six cups and saucers further on. Scottish bluebell pattern, lot 265, showing there. Nice little bunny underneath. So they're rather nice lots, a little bit different as well. Mm. Um, 717, you wanted another picture, look at that. That screams all day long, Henry Sylvester Stannard, maybe his sister Lillian. And there's a hint here of what might have been the signature, because Stannard puts a long line across the top of his oh, signature. Okay. But it's not clear, so we've said attributed to, but that's, that's what he did all day, is paint thatched cottages and flowery gardens <laughs> with the odd figure. I'm looking at... Uh... 714 Adam and Eve. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's quite something, isn't it? Well, this is the, the fall from wow, yes, that's strong, isn't it? Is this one of your collection? 
<laughs> this has got nothing to do with, well actually this is my client from my wow. client's collection. That is something. Yes, it's by Blanquet, 1974. Um, yeah, it's a strong thing, isn't it? It's, it's very um, strong, yes. It looks like the fall of Adam. I'm not quite so sure. Eve's looking pretty she, empowered there. She does. I think it's quite a contemporary sort of picture. Yeah, she's about on female one, isn't empowerment she? and everything. Yes. So there we go. Ooh, we're we're always wine. cutting edge here. Yum, yum. Yes, um, Sauterne, I yes. believe we've got uh, six or seven bottles there. Uh, seven. If you've drunk them all, they become six. Lot 287, mixed um, vineyard. So, but there we go. If that's not enough for you, I don't know. How about a, a, an inkwell modelled as an owl on a feather with a pseudo bourbon mark, lot 301. It's all there. Silver as well to be considered. Yeah, we've got a nice lot, haven't Jewelry we? on top of that. Yes. Jewelry's been flying as well. Watch has been going well. There was an IWC Ritz watch last Monday that made four and a half thousand pounds. So uh, yes, it's all good to go. Come along and have a look. Look at it over Easter and send us lots of emails saying, can I have a condition report on this? Or you've done that wrong or whatever. We, we love those on Tuesday morning. And um, otherwise we hope to see you at the sale. Thank you very much.